Each year, the size of computer data sets gets larger, reaching a size of many gigabytes for today's most data-intensive applications. Von Neumann computers were designed for applications which had by these standards very small amounts of data. Even the giant mainframes of the 1970s computed on data sets that now seem very small in comparison. It is this million-fold growth in data-intensive applications, such as the simulation of seismic waves generated from an earthquake, that has led to a new form of supercomputer, one with thousands of processors instead of just one or two. The Connection Machine Supercomputer from Thinking Machines Corporation offers performance that grows as the size of the data grows, reaching peak speeds above 10 gigaflops for the largest data sets. Often these large data sets are generated by simulations, where an object is represented by millions of individual data elements. Other large data sets are archival, with information built up over years or decades. In both simulation and archival applications, computations must be applied to every element of data. The principle of dividing a simulation into many discrete elements is used throughout computational science. Here, the connection machine system computes the behavior of waves. The space through which the waves move is actually made up of very small grid blocks. The partial differential wave function must be applied to every one of these grid blocks repeatedly in order to calculate the motion of the wave energy. Because it can operate on 64,000 grid blocks at once instead of just one, the connection machine supercomputer sustains speeds of more than five gigaflops for this class of applications. Database applications often require millions of individual documents to be searched. Finding the right document is like finding a needle in a haystack. The connection machine categorizes documents and stores them so that they can be retrieved with simple English language queries. Documents themselves can be used to further guide the search for other documents on the same subject. To match the speed of the connection machine, a conventional mainframe would have to operate above 6,000 MIPS. Connection machine systems are well suited for data-intensive applications because the processing power grows as the size of the data grows. For example, a 4,000 processor CM2A might take one minute to perform a calculation on 100 million bytes of data. The exact same program running on an 8,000 processor system can process 200 million bytes of data and complete the run in the same minute. Still larger connection machine systems with 16,000, 32,000, and 64,000 processors provide the power to run the same computation on successively larger data sets and still complete the run in the same minute of time. The ability to grow as the size of the data grows sets the connection machine system apart from von Neumann computers. A von Neumann computer is serial. Data elements must be brought to its central processor one at a time. Control parallel computers extend this architecture somewhat to systems with several or several dozen processors. The connection machine architecture is different. It associates processors directly with the data and simply adds more processors as the size of the data grows. The largest systems have 64,000 processors. Connection machine virtual processing allows each physical processor to operate as many virtual processors each with a smaller memory. Communications among processors is supported in hardware by the connection machine router. Linkages reconfigure dynamically to match the underlying data topology. The general communications network allows detailed information to be rearranged according to the needs of the computation. All 64,000 processors send and receive messages simultaneously an applications example illustrates the way that parallel processing and communications work together. Wave behavior is described by a partial differential equation, the wave equation. A common way of discretizing this equation is with a second-order finite difference lattice, 
which calculates the values of wave energy at individual points in the medium. The values at individual points are dependent upon the values at the previous time step and the values at neighboring points. Hence, the equation may be arranged into its geometric form. Each grid point accesses data from neighboring grid points and uses that data to update its own status. All the grid points can exchange their data and update their wave energy in parallel. A very simple and natural programming style provides sustained performance of many gigaflops. In the wave equation example, the communication pattern was very regular. Other applications have much more complex topologies, often requiring the system to change its linkages dynamically. For example, in a molecular simulation, the connection machine system calculates the interactions and positional changes of thousands of individual atoms in parallel. Notice, for example, the fluctuations in the hexagon grouping at the top of this molecule as it rotates into view. Fluid flow simulation is still another supercomputer application that is fundamentally parallel because the fluid behavior must be calculated everywhere at once. Here, the system models the effects of a channel twist on the behavior of fluid passing through. In a two-dimensional view, the twists appear as bumps. Initially, they impart a strong rotational velocity to the fluid. This neural network computation starts with a blank slate. By the end of the run, the system has learned the shapes of all the letters and numbers. The slight differences between the C and the G are the last to be resolved. To understand how defective materials will react to stress, the simultaneous motion of hundreds of thousands of atoms must be computed in three dimensions. This connection machine simulation shows that the fault propagates diagonally rather than just going straight through the material. In the field of medical imaging, the system consolidates two-dimensional slices of tomography data into realistic three-dimensional images that may be rotated and studied interactively. These are just a few examples of supercomputer applications that are deeply and fundamentally parallel. Now, for the first time, these applications have a computing environment that matches their inherent parallelism exactly. The data parallel architecture of the connection machine supercomputer.